What's going on guys? Tyler here from don'tpanicdothis.com, the site all about helping you to beat your panic attacks and anxiety. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about how to overcome presentation anxiety or the fear of public speaking, glossophobia, stage fright, whatever you wanna call it, this fear, this phobia, affects up to three quarters of the population and is often cited as a fear more common than the fear of death itself. So what makes all these people in the world fear this same thing? People like Winston Churchill, Abraham Lincoln, and even Gandhi. Gandhi had a fear of public speaking. Uh, so obviously it's totally normal for you to feel this way as well. I know that when I was in high school and even in college, uh, for a, a large part of college, uh, I also suffered from presentation anxiety. I hated getting up in front of the class and having to give a speech or even present with a group. Um, and I was always looking for ways out of it. I was always trying to avoid this. Later on as an adult, I figured out uh, that for your career and academics and, and just everything, it's often better just to overcome this fear. I know not everybody's ready for that, and so I will talk about some ways that we can avoid uh, presentations in class. There are some tricks I had up my sleeve for that that I will share with you because I think that it's better than the alternative, which is dropping out of school altogether. Um, but yeah, in this video, what I want, you, what we're really going to focus on is how to overcome a fear of presenting in class or at work. How to uh, some things we can do to stop a panic attack if we have one while presenting. Supplements that can help us to relax and ease our nerves a little bit while presenting, uh, and just things like that. I think that by the end of this video, my goal is to make you feel a lot more comfortable giving presentations and just to take the bulk of your anxiety down a notch. Uh, so let's get right into this. Let's start with the basics. What causes presentation anxiety? So anxiety in general, we talk about in other videos and articles, uh, but basically the root cause of our anxiety is mostly just from our ancestral history. So a lot of it's hardwired in us. It might not make sense today why standing in front of a classroom, a completely safe setting, would cause us to you know, hyperventilate our heart racing. Why does our body, why does our brain think we're actually in danger that this is a life or death situation. And the answer stems back to our ancient roots, uh, back from the caveman days, when maybe being surrounded by a group wasn't such a friendly setting. Maybe having all eyes on you meant you did something wrong and you're now s surrounded by the tribe and you're either gonna be in physical danger or cast out from the tribe, rejected, which also could mean sure death if you're being uh, you know, abandoned into the wilderness. So these sort of evolutionary scars are still left on our psyches which is most likely why we still have these fears today, even when they might not entirely make sense. The good news is we can learn to overcome these fears with repeated exposure and practice. All right, I'm gonna sidetrack myself for a second here just to talk about how to actually get out of a presentation. Now, I know this is gonna be a little bit of a controversial topic for a lot of people because I'll admit it, Avoiding a presentation is not the best way to deal with your fears. In fact, it's probably one of the worst things you can do in the long term for overcoming a fear of public speaking. However, I know that not everyone is there. From personal experience, I know how it feels when you have a presentation tomorrow or next week and you know you can't sleep the night before, the whole day of, your stomach's in knots. I know how bad that feeling is. And I know some of you guys, your anxiety is gonna be so bad that you're thinking about dropping out of school, just taking the zero for the grade, Etc. And I don't want you to have to do that. That's stuff that honestly, sometimes I did. Sometimes I just took the zero and it hurt my grade. And then I would have to get, you know, an A plus on every single test uh, to kind of counterbalance the fact that I skipped the project. Uh, I don't want you guys to have to do that. So I'm going to talk a little bit just briefly about some ways that you can get out of a presentation. Uh, so if you're really not ready to overcome your stage fright and take it head on, there are some things you can do. First off, Intentionally choose your classes based on which ones don't require presentations. You can figure this out by looking at the syllabus the first week of class. If you see that presentations or you know group projects are gonna account for 40% of the grade, then you know it's probably not a class that's gonna be right for you. Uh, something else you can do, you can tell the professor or the teacher about your anxiety, about what you're going through. For the most part, they're going to be empathetic. They're going to listen and hear you out. Uh, they're not gonna want you to necessarily get off scot-free. They, they, lots of people are going to come to them all the time with excuses for why they can't get their work done, and they're going to be on guard for that. So just remember to be communicative and maybe even suggest something else that you could do instead. Something I might have done in the past would be 
you know, hey, I'm really nervous about this five minute presentation. Could I instead write a five minute, uh, I mean, a, a five page essay? Now, the five page, page essay is probably more work than the five minute presentation. So the teacher's not gonna think that you're weaseling out of work. You're still learning something and you have something that the teacher can actually grade you on. So that's more likely to be agreed upon than if you just went up to your teacher and said, hey, can I just not do any work? Um, so yeah, talk to your teacher, let them know what you're going through, ask for alternative assignments. Uh, if there's a group presentation, now obviously this is something that you're pulled into with a group, but chances are, say you're working with three, four, five people at a time, uh, chances are somebody else in the group is not going to be as anxious as you are. So you can explain, it might be a difficult conversation, but you can try to explain to the group how you're feeling, what you're going through, and offer to do more of the work for less of the speaking role. So you, you can kind of just say, hey, look, I'm really just going through something right now. I'm really socially anxious. People are really aware of mental health these days, which is a good thing for you. Um, so if you pitch it to them this way and say, hey, look, I'm just, I, I'm not that good of a public speaker. I get really nervous. Do you mind doing a little bit of my speaking or just more of a speaking role? And in return, I'll do more of the work. I'll do the research. I'll do the writing. I just have a hard time pitching it. Uh, and a lot of times this is a great deal for anybody who doesn't mind the spotlight. And somebody will probably take you up on this, uh, even if you have to slip them a 20 or something like that. I mean, somebody somebody will in all likelihood be willing uh, to, to take that role on for you. Uh, another really awesome suggestion is to utilize basically any uh, presentation software. There's tools that you can use that can really take a lot of the pressure off you. We'll go into that a little bit more later on. But um, Basically, it's just important to know that there are ways to kind of get out of this or at least to take some of the burden off your shoulders. So if you're thinking about dropping out because of this or you feel like school's just not for you, don't completely dismiss that route in life just because you're feeling some presentation anxiety because there are other options out there. Now, I do get into this topic a lot more in another video and another article, so I will link to those below. Uh, do check those out. Um, you know, if you're really just not ready, I, I think everybody should confront their phobias and their fears, but you got to do it on your own timeline. Uh, being pushed into it is, isn't usually good for anybody. Uh, so do check that video and that article out if that's something that's going to be helpful to you. It's, it's going to tell you like, I think like six of my favorite tricks for how to get out of a presentation basically. Okay, with that tangent aside, I really, really do think that the best thing you can do for your own anxiety and panic attacks is to address your fears head on. Almost always, this is the right option. Uh, so back when I was in high school and college, I briefly mentioned I had a lot of presentation anxiety myself. Um, mostly for, mostly the reason that this occurred was because I had given plenty of presentations, plenty of speeches with no problem. Voluntarily, I was in clubs that required public speaking that I chose to do. And then at some point in my life, probably around 16 years old or so, I was probably a sophomore or freshman in high school, uh, all of a sudden I started having panic attacks. And one of these panic attacks randomly happened while I was reading some stupid poem or something in front of the class. I don't, I don't really remember the details of it, but... It was just, I, I mean, I was just dealing, I, I hit it pretty well. I don't think like my classmates weren't all laughing at me or anything like that. I had it hidden beneath the surface, but my heart was racing. I just was like sweating. It was hard to breathe. And I'm trying to read this poem like with a frog in my throat. But uh, it was just one of the worst memories of my life, uh, trying to endure that and not embarrass myself. So I know how it feels. Um, and I did have some tricks obviously, because that was early high school. I had a lot more presentations to go, uh, you know, throughout high school and college. So I did have some tricks that worked for me to help decrease my anxiety and to stop panic attacks while presenting. Uh, some ways that I did this, uh, first, volunteer to go first. It might seem strange, but especially if you have a group project or even if you're doing something on your own, when the teacher says, do I have any volunteers? Who wants to go first? Who wants to go next? I would be mm -hmm. like, yeah, me, I I'll go. Because it was better for me to just do it and get it done with and to jump. And oftentimes I feel that, I would feel that my anticipation anxiety, just waiting uh, for something that I was dreading was worse than actually just doing it, just taking the leap of faith and going for it. So I do, I do recommend volunteering. Um, the more you put it off, you know, if you go last, that's just more time where you're gonna be sitting there thinking about it. I like to look forward to that feeling of like sitting in the seat afterwards and just being like, Oh, okay, I'm done. It's over. I did good. I, f I feel good. Now I can just watch everyone else's presentations in peace. Um, something else while you're up there, just remember you're not going to die. Uh, like any panic attack, it's going to pass. This is harmless. You're not going to die. Think about panic attacks or instances of anxiety that you've had in the past. past. It always ends and you're always okay at the end of it. 
Um, you know, and even the presentation itself, you're only up there for a couple of minutes tops. Uh, take control of your breathing. So I really like the four, seven, eight breathing technique. That's breathing in for four seconds through your nose, holding for seven seconds, and then exhaling for eight seconds through your mouth. Uh, because the exhale is longer than the inhale, it just helps to activate the parasympathetic, parasympathetic nervous system and calm you down uh, a bit, as opposed to having that fight or flight response, just absolute panic while up there. I also like to find a focus object. So if you're in a classroom, it could be a ceiling tile in the distance, uh, some, some light panel maybe, um, a pile of books. It could literally be anything that you'll just draw your focus to. Now, usually when you're giving a presentation, you wanna scan the room comfortably, whatever. We're not even, we're not there yet. Uh, we're just trying to get through the presentation, not necessarily trying to deliver an amazing one. So if you wanna have a focus object that your eyes go to, I know a lot of, uh, a lot of public speakers have talked about doing this using a focus object in the distance and anytime your mind starts to wander towards something negative or towards anything out of your control just try to redirect your thoughts towards that focus object and you know let any of those other noisy thoughts just pass uh, also i want you to try to remember and focus on any times that you have succeeded you know, a lot of times when we're anxious about something coming up, we just really, really harp on the things that could potentially go wrong. I want you to focus instead on the times that it went right, because chances are, you know, if you're in college, you've already done tons of presentations in the past. I want you to hold on to those memories of the ones that went right. And even the ones that went wrong, if those those kind of pop into your head, like I said, I had a bad, bad experience giving a speech or a, a whatever presentation. And uh, when I had that, I, even if I thought about that, I would still have to remember, okay, yeah, I had a bad experience, but did it kill me? I, I'm okay. Like I got through it in a couple of minutes. You know, nobody really noticed anything was going on. And even if they did, they're going to forget. Like people don't really hold on to that stuff forever. It's, it's, it's useless. Um, if you have a friend in the class, you might, you know, go flash them a smile, give them a wink, uh, just be funny. You know, just, just something to take your mind off it. I'd rather stifle laughter while up there than battle a panic attack the whole time I'm standing in front of the class. So, you know, look to your friends for that. And really just remember that nobody's paying attention. Most of the people in their, in, in their seats are like shifting nervously, just like you waiting their turn to go up, or they're just entirely zoned out. Unless you're giving a really amazing presentation, uh, you know, it's a skill to give a, a really great presentation and captivate everybody's attention. And if you're just trying to get through it, that's probably not gonna be where you're at. So most people are probably just zoned out, looking around, and that's nothing personal to you. That's probably what they're doing for most of the presentations. They're involuntarily having to watch these presentations. They're probably not that interested in them. So don't feel like everybody's thinking about you. People aren't noticing that you're nervous, anything like that. Unless you do something really, really dramatic, nobody's paying attention. So don't think about it too much. So these are just a few of my favorite ways to stop panic attacks while presenting in class. Pick the ones that work for you, or if you have your own, feel free to share them with me. Okay, so you know how to stop a panic attack during your presentation, but that's not enough. We want you to actually be comfortable giving your presentation in the first place. So if you take nothing else from this article, I think that the most important thing for you to keep in mind for the future is to utilize alternative methods of, preventing, of presenting. So what I mean by this is presentation tools, presentation software, I'm gonna link in this article to my favorite uh, presentation tools, as well as I'm throwing up another video about uh, presentation software and presentation tools that can just really, really help take your presentation to the next level and take a lot of the burden of presenting off of you. Uh, we're gonna talk about exactly how that can work. But basically, what I want you to realize is that if you're giving a class presentation, all your teacher really cares about, or if even if this is for work, all your boss really cares about is that you put hard work and dedication into your assignment, you learn something through the process, and then you're able to convey what you learned to your classmates or your, your colleagues, your peers, whoever. The point is you learn something, you're teaching it to everybody else. That's the whole point of a presentation. So as long as you're able to hit those points, it doesn't really matter, in my opinion, that you're the one speaking or actively speaking while up there. So what I'm getting at here is there are ways that you can basically pre-record or utilize software to make an absolutely stunning presentation without having to be there talking off the cuff and, and just actively speaking in front of the class in that moment. Um, so the most basic example of how you could do this is to film a video just like this, a talking head video. It's just me talking into a camera. A lot of you guys could probably do this with your smartphones or your webcams or anything like that. Uh, it would probably be a little bit lower quality. 
but uh, it is an option. So that would be the most basic example of this. It's just a, just filming a video and then putting it up on the screen and saying, here, here we go. Uh, that's something that I would have to recommend talking to the teacher about first rather than just saying, here teacher, put this on the computer. You know, uh, put throw this up on the monitor. You know, talk to them first. Um, and it's not my favorite option to do just a video, but you can put a video or or audio of you actually pre-reading the slides and put that in the back of a PowerPoint presentation. So rather than just standing up there and hitting the slides and talking about the points, you could pre-record it. There's really no reason why you shouldn't. You're still getting your assignment done. You're still putting in all the work. You're just not actively talking in front of the class in that moment. If that doesn't work, there's other software uh, where even you don't even have to show your face or even your voice uh, with other software that uses animation, sort of like drag and drop. Like I said, I'm going to link below to all my favorite software. My opinions might change over time. I might learn about additional uh, pieces of software that work even better in the future. So I'm going to keep this a separate video, a separate article. Uh, I will link to all that stuff below, to that article, to that video. So I highly recommend checking that stuff out uh, because there is a lot of awesome presentation software out there that can really kind of ease you into it. So you can do take the role, whatever role you're comfortable with, uh, whether it be a lot of active speaking or no active speaking. And the good thing about this is it doesn't, some of these, some of the better tools, it doesn't look like you're just kind of trying to get out of doing a project. It looks like you're going above and beyond. You know, if you have an animated video talking about all the, t all the points, it looks like you did more work than anybody else in the class. And maybe you did, uh, but it, it really shows and it's more likely, in my opinion, to get you an A. On top of all those recommendations, I'm gonna leave you down below for uh, presentation software. I also really, really wanna recommend that you guys consider uh, a sort of supplement that might help you to like a stress supplement that might help you to relax and deliver your presentation more effectively. Now, I'm not a doctor, so take what I say here with a grain of salt. I typically advocate against medications because I think that in the long term, they're just going to make you more reliant and more dependent on that substance over time. But I think occasional use with mild enough supplements can be a really, really good tool to help you overcome your fears and step outside of your comfort zone one step at a time. Uh, I'd rather you be able to present using a stress supplement uh, than not be able to present at all and retreat deeper into your comfort zone. So for occasional use, I think that stress supplements can be a good option. My absolute favorite stress supplement of all time is something called Phenibute. I will link below again. Once again, I'm gonna have a lot of links down there. Um, once again, I'll link to below because that's that's worth its own whole video and whole article to explain exactly what Phenibute is and how it's helped me. It's a social supplement, in so to speak, because it, it really helps you to feel more calm, but also more outgoing in the sense that you're more sociable. Uh, you might want to talk more and feel more confident. That's certainly been my case. I've used it on job interviews, uh, presentations, anything like that. I think it could be really, really awesome. So Phenibute is what it's called. I will link to it below uh, for a good source to, to purchase it yourself if you're interested, as well as just to kind of learn a little bit more about it. Winston Churchill, former prime minister of the UK and one of the most famous public speakers in the world, actually suffered from public speaking himself. And one of his most famous quotes that I really love is, let our advanced worrying become advanced thinking and planning. So basically this is kind of about anticipation anxiety. Rather than worrying about future events to come, let's spend that time instead thinking and planning uh, to really prepare for the situation that's causing us anxiety in the first place. So with that said, here are some tips to present a project effectively. Uh, first off, while presenting, make sure that you're smiling and making eye contact with your audience. Communicate with body language. Move around the stage a bit. Use your hands to uh, articulate gestures and get your point across. Use visual and audio aids. So this kind of goes back to the presentation tools I mentioned earlier. If you don't have any presentation tools, you might want to use notes to keep you on track. That's pretty fair game even for great public speakers uh, just to keep them on track. If I were giving a speech, I would certainly need notes. Uh, not that I'm some great public speaker, but I would lose my train of thought without some type of notes or some type of guidance. Um, make sure you know your audience if you're really passionately trying to get your point across. Uh, knowing your audience is going to help a lot with that. I think Abraham Lincoln said that he spends two thirds of his time uh, before a speech thinking about what the audience wants to hear and one third thinking about what he actually wants to say. Uh, that's not a quote, it's just he said something like that. Uh, don't quote me on it. Uh, and then finally, keep it short and concise. Get your point across concisely and it's going to be a much more effective presentation.
Okay, let's talk long term here. How do we overcome stage fright and presentation anxiety forever? Uh, so with regard to stage fright, people typically have three approaches uh, that everybody's different, but they kind of handle their, their stage fright in three different ways. The first is complete avoidance. Now, post-college public speaking occasions like presentations are pretty few and far between. So this is something that for the most part, we can get away with. Uh, yeah, you can pretty much avoid presentations for your whole life. It's not that difficult to do after college. Um, however, it is going to potentially be a hindrance to your career in the future. Uh, I can speak from personal experience that I avoided presentations from a lot, not all of them, but I avoided a lot of them in high school and college. And then in my career afterwards, I ended up, I took a sales job and then I took another job that required public speaking in front of 150 to 200 people multiple times a day. So, you know, <laughs> that taught me that <laughs> I liked money more than I disliked public speaking, uh, basically. I, I was forced to conquer the fear even though I thought it was in the rear view mirror. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. Some people will try to avoid it completely, but it might always come back around in the future. So it's better to just try to overcome it sooner rather than later. Um, now we have people who are going to be re reluctant and occasional public speakers. So this is probably where most people in the world currently fall. Most of us aren't 100% comfortable with public speaking, but we suck it up and get it done when we absolutely have to. This isn't a bad place to be, but it's uncomfortable occasionally. Uh, and then the final tactic that people, some people will take is to conquer, to just 100% go ahead and try and conquer presentation anxiety. Some brave souls are really gonna choose to just completely crush their fear of public speaking, overcoming stage fright and glossophobia entirely. This path is not for the faint of heart as it isn't easy. However, it has the largest payoff in the end with regard to academics and their career. Uh, so we've already talked a little bit about the first two uh, methods earlier. We've talked about avoiding and we've talked about, you know, basically sucking it up, being able to get through it with the help of, of software and tactics to reduce our anxiety in the middle of a presentation. But what if you actually just wanna be, learn to be completely comfortable giving a presentation and eliminate your presentation anxiety entirely? Basically, the best way to overcome our fears long-term is going to be through exposure therapy. Um, the fear of public speaking is no different. Stage fright is the same way. Uh, if you really wanna overcome this in the long run, you're going to need to learn to expose yourself to your fear in small controlled doses. So what I mean by this is you wanna be able to step outside of your comfort zone without necessarily going into your panic zone. So I'm not telling you to go step on stage in front of thousands of people. Uh, you know, I, I don't want you to have an absolute panic attack and have your fear worsened than ever before. But also if you stay in your comfort zone and you avoid presentations your whole life, your comfort zone is likely going to shrink over time. And we don't want that either. So my suggestion instead is going to be to identify the smallest possible steps you can take in the right direction to conquer your fear of public speaking over time. So just try to basically what I mean by this is, you know, maybe you're not quite ready to give a presentation in front of class, but is there anything you can do that's a little bit outside your comfort zone, but still totally manageable? Like raising your hand to volunteer more in class, going up to the board to answer, you know, a math equation or something like that. Um, what can you do? Can you volunteer from your seat? Can you do something like that? Maybe you're already comfortable with that stuff and you're ready for an open mic night at a local bar, or you're ready for your local, join your local Toastmasters group and give uh, speeches from time to time there to really overcome your public speaking. Uh, you know, everybody's gonna be different, but these are a couple of things you might wanna consider. Um, you know, you could do the presentation, a volunteer to take on the presentation with your group, but ask to do a little bit less of it than usual. Uh, but at least you're up there and you're presenting rather than completely skipping out and ditching your group and not doing the presentation at all. So identify those little areas where you can grow, where you can step just a little bit outside your comfort zone and seek them out actively. Get excited about it because you, even if you don't realize it, even on an unconscious or subconscious level, by doing this, by doing this kind of just, you're drilling it into your brain, you're teaching your brain, hey, look, I don't need to be afraid of this. I, I can talk in front of the class and I'm gonna be okay. Nothing bad's gonna happen. And the more we do this, the more our comfort zone expands. Even if it's happening slowly, it's happening. And over time, we're gonna feel more and more comfortable doing this. Like I said, guys, um, I wasn't comfortable at all. Thinking about talking in front of people would give me the worst anxiety uh, back in high school and, and even college. But afterward, I had to kind of do it for my for a, a couple of jobs I had, and I became more comfortable with it just by, you know, maybe the first couple of days were really hard, but then it got easier and easier, and I worked my way up to it. 
Uh, you guys can do this too. Like I said, even Winston Churchill, who I quoted before, is one of the most famous orators in existence. He's regularly quoted uh, for and referenced for his public speaking skills. And he actually suffered from a fear of public speaking. So you guys can absolutely overcome this. It is going to be work. Uh, but just remember that you're not alone. Take some solidarity in the fact that even if you mess up, most people can relate. I've seen people completely choke while giving a speech and I didn't feel like I needed to mock or laugh. Nobody in the class mocked or laughed at them. We kind of all were like, oh geez, that I could see that happening to me. Like it's, it's a sense of empathy, not, not derision. You don't want to, to tease somebody for that because so many of us are right there with you. Like three quarters of the population feel this. Uh, so you can overcome it and you're not alone in feeling this. Uh, if this video was helpful to you guys, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share this with a friend that it might help. Like I said, don't forget to check out those other videos and articles that I'm going to link to below. I think the biggest takeaway would probably be the, the presentation software that I want to recommend to you guys because just being able to throw that up on the screen and, and choose how much you're actually going to speak versus letting the, versus just hitting play and letting your pre-recorded thing go. Uh, you know, it, it makes a big, big difference and it gives you some sense of control in a situation where you typically wouldn't have much control at all. Uh, so I hope this goes helpful to you guys. Once again, like, comment, subscribe if it was. Comment below some of your uh, favorite tricks for public speaking or just some of your stories with presentations in high school, college, work. Uh, I love to hear that stuff. So thank you guys so much for sticking to the end. I will catch you next time.